Today on Hands On Photography, we're still working on the photography business, if you will. But this time I have someone else that's going to join me here on the show. And it's going to talk about their journey in the world of photography and just, you know, all of the steps getting started and their tips that you could definitely use and help you along the way. And I got to tell you, the images are just so daggum beautiful and the barrier to entry to get into this particular field. Mm. Hey, it's super easy. And all you got to do is just put in a little bit of effort. Hey, y'all stay tuned. This is going to be a good show. This is Twit. This episode of Hands-On Photography is brought to you by Melissa. Poor data quality can cost organizations an average of $15 million each year. Make sure your customer contact data is up to date. Get started with 1,000 records clean for free at melissa.com slash twit. Hey, what's happening, everybody? I am Ant Pruitt, and this is Hands On Photography here on Twit TV. Hey, hope y'all are doing well. I am unbelievable as always. It's another fine Thursday where I get to sit down and share different tips and tricks to help make you a better photographer as well as a better post processor. And sometimes I get to sit down with a photography guest, and that's what this week's episode is about. I am able to have on professional photographers from time to time to have them share their experiences in the world of photography, whether it's being a seasoned veteran, whether it's being someone that's just getting started or someone that's sort of, you know, intermediate in the middle of the road, because there's all types of levels in this game. And it's all types of different stories that all of us can learn from. And today is one of those days. And I'm really looking forward to that. But before we get into bringing on the guests, allow me to welcome all you brand new listeners and viewers of the show. Welcome to you. Let me know how you found out about the show. I'm so glad that you're here. But while you're here, go ahead and do me a favor and subscribe in whatever podcast app you're using. You know, we're available in what is it called? Apple Podcasts and iTunes. Do people even still use iTunes? I don't know. But whatever Apple's podcast player is, we're there. We're on Spotify, have a YouTube channel. So if you want to subscribe and watch on YouTube, you can. Uh, At any rate, make sure you leave us a rating and comment so to help push us up in the whole search algorithms, algorithmic stuff. And uh, tell some other folks about the show. And if you still have as a problem trying to get the subscription stuff squared away, just check out the website twit.tv slash hop. That's twit.tv slash H-O-P for hands on photography. And you'll see all of our subscription options right there. All right. So I've gotten my preamble stuff out of the way. I know y'all didn't want to hear that. Let's just get into this into this week's guest. Now, today's guest is Mr. Michael Wilson. This man, I've known him for man, it's, it's been quite a bit, been quite a few years. And I met him uh, when I was hosting a community online, similar to a couple weeks ago when when we had Mr. John, uh, John Davis on uh, when I had the community for smartphone photographers. And it just sort of just spawned into some other things. And Mike was come to find out was right in the same town with me there in Charlotte, North Carolina. And I had the pleasure to go out and shoot with him and stay in touch. And I've been watching his photography journey and it's just been unbelievable watching him just continue to grow and, and and just be able to get more people in his book of business and create some absolutely beautiful work. And we're sort of going to continue our discussion about photography as a business. And I think he's just just another person to really help give you all some knowledge uh, because he's specializing in the headshot world. So without further ado, let me go ahead and bring my man on. Mr. Mike, how you doing, my man? Pretty good. How about yourself? Unbelievable, brother. Unbelievable. I am really, really, really glad to have you on. I've been watching you all these years. You know that because we chit chat back and forth over social. And it's just been so fun to watch you continue to progress. You know, I remember a couple of years ago being in good old Belmont, North Khaki Lackey, <laughs> hanging yeah. out at one of the little street parties and just doing a, mm-hmm. a photo walk because it's just fun to do to get out with your camera and I learned some stuff from you and you learned some stuff from me. And that's just that's how it's supposed to be. It's the community, yeah. you know. But with that out of the way, you've been getting into the world of professional headshots. And I remember yeah. back then you were telling me, hey, dude, I, I've been on LinkedIn. And I've just been 
getting people more and more interested. And I picked up my camera and I have, you know, mm -hmm. don't even matter what the camera was, but you had a camera and you had a couple of lenses and you're like, you know what? I can light you. I can, I could shoot this shot, sign yep. me up. And it just spawned from there. But before we get into that, give us a little bit of background about you. You know, you're from North Carolina. What else you get into? So photography is my main thing, my main hobby. Mm -hmm. It's creative outlet. Um, just like spending time with my kids. That's the main thing, uh, doing what they like to do, mm -hmm. uh, the sports, every swim team. Um, so <laughs> that, that's following their journey is my main hobby and getting in photography was part of that cause that was the main reason I bought a camera was to just document their life, just take pictures of them. Uh, so I'd have something throughout the years to hold on to yeah. and, it just kind of grew from there. Yeah. And that's awesome. And I remember you telling me that because your your son, he, he was tiny then. He was toddler mm -hmm. size back then. And you were mm -hmm. you were constantly taking different photos of him. He was your your test model, if you will. Yeah. And I remember you uh, taking advantage of working different angles with your camera height and, and changing yeah. lighting around. And, and it, it was just it was just a lot of fun to watch your behind the scenes with that. So some years go by and you've taken that knowledge from, you know, just goofing around with your son and the camera and has started to turn it into a business. So, so tell yeah. me a little bit about that. So basically having my son, taking pictures of him, uh, just figuring out how to professional photographers, cause I didn't consider myself a professional then, uh, mm -hmm. we're getting images, how, mm -hmm what made the images so interesting and what attracted people to them. So I would, I would shoot a lot with my son, um, have them different things like just far as testing shutter speed is catching stuff in fast motion, mm -hmm. uh, slow motion, uh, body turns, uh, how light is getting in the eyes, just little stuff like that is very hard to do it, it was a struggle for me it was a struggle how to take a tack sharp image you know i was taking images that were sharp but mm -hmm. they wasn't tack sharp mm -hmm. and that took a while to realize i'm doing this wrong let me fix it and just the whole process of working with my kids um getting interested interest from other families saying i see you posted this of your kid can you take pictures of our kids kind of uh, help grow a little bit so nice now when you were able to shoot those different families um what was that experience like was did you have a like a lot of bumps in the road or, or learning moments where something didn't quite go your way or oh there was tons of struggle <laughs> <laughs> So, hey, that uh, was a softball question. I knew the answer. Yeah, so <laughs> there was uh, a lot of times where at that time, the camera was doing all the work. Okay. I had no, I didn't, I thought I did, but I didn't have a clue really what I was doing. Mm -hmm. I would go to one session and it would come out phenomenal. I'm like, I'm finally getting this. And then I'd go to the next session and it would be horrible. And I just happened to walk into good light, basically. Uh, 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 or shoot on an overcast day. And, and, but I got doing that taught me that how to pick up and learn from what am I doing wrong? What, what's made this session bad? So I always go back and look at my images and see where I struggled, what I like, what I didn't like, uh, analyze them. How was the light that day? Uh, just the situations was I shooting one person, multiple people mm -hmm. and you start putting together what I was doing right mm -hmm. and what I was doing wrong and how do I fix what I was doing wrong? All right. So you going in and you're doing your bit of an analysis. Um, you took that information to and applied it towards your next event. With, were you in the position to be able to like do site surveys and figure out where to shoot what's going to happen beforehand? Or how, how did all of that work out for you? So I tried that. I tried the location scout. I tried to uh, just notice where sun's going to be at this certain time of day. 
And it, I mean, to me, it was kind of a waste of time when I did that because there was always another curveball that come up that obstacle <laughs> that I had to deal with. Wait a minute, and, Mike. You telling me <laughs> a, a session is never just the perfect setup? What? <laughs> uh, no, I mean you hear all this that it's you just got a good camera and that's all you need. But I mean, it was, it was tough. Uh, <laughs> so I had quite a few sessions and then I had a lot of bad sessions. I, I failed a lot. So mm-hmm. learning from those failures were good moments to have. And, and then once I got where I was good at shooting, I realized I was bad at communicating cause I walked out of the session and right. with a lady and, I thought it was the best session I've ever had. You know, I was thrilled with the shots I got, mm-hmm. but it wasn't the shots she wanted. And so then I was like, well, I need to get more in detail before the session, planning the session, this and that. So there, there's a lot that goes into it and it's starting to get finely tuned right now. Oh, nice. Nice. So when you talk about the communication prior to the session, uh, is this all just done over email? How, how do you handle it? Do you have like in-person meetings or things like uh, that? So I prefer before somebody books a session, I prefer they set up a call with me that way to see if I'm a right fit for them because I like to tell people what I can't do uh-huh. and, uh, or this person can do it better. Right. And so I like to figure out exactly what they want, exactly what they need. And then I can problem solve and tell you if I'm the right fit. Um, mm-hmm. So I like to set up a call and find out all the details, what you're wearing, this and that. What What's the intent for this? Because that, that's big. I never used to ask what you actually use in these photos for. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So uh, just little stuff like that helps a lot. And it just makes the session so efficient now where you put, you prepare for everything and then the session's easy. So it's a lot of communication to me is the big thing. Right. So what are some of the things that you've had to, to turn away? You know, cause me personally, I know you is, is the headshot person in Charlotte period. If someone yeah. ever, because every now and then I'll get some messages of people that s- still assume I live there, mm-hmm. and I try to tell, I try to send them your way. <laughs> you know, it's like, it. no, this dude, he's he's the headshot guy in Charlotte. What are some of the things that that you have had, you've had to turn away? You know, when people say, "Well, I want to hire you so, for a shoot," and a lot of times people just they assume I'm a photographer. I take family, weddings, all the above. Oh, yeah. I want to stick into the headshot world. I Mm want to stick into the branding world. Uh, I will do, like, I like real estate, stuff like that. I don't advertise, but I'll do it. But Mm -hmm. I will turn away, like, weddings. I turn away family gigs, unless it's friends. Um, Any kind of, like, birthday shoots. I'm just now starting to get into events and doing that. Mm -hmm. Uh, but a lot of times if I know I can't do it, if, or if I know I'm not the right fit for this couple shoot, I'm going to refer you to somebody I I know that's going to do it better than me. Nice. Nice. Because the way I see photography is this is priceless. This is stuff in five, 10 years. You're really on look back on and you're either going to be happy. You hired the right photographer or right bad so and plus like special like couples family stuff like that you want prints of that yeah so it's better to have somebody that's planning to shoot for your to hang on your wall stuff like that than Mm -hmm. me Mm -hmm. so i would definitely refer if i know there's a better fit Mm -hmm. now what what made you get more interested in the world of of doing headshots and branding shots I liked seeing, well, first off, I seen, seen there's a, a big need for headshots. Mm-hmm. Uh, I get on LinkedIn, I go to the supermarket, I see ads on buggies, I see billboards. There's so many terrible headshots out there. <laughs> and a lot of people break it down to, I'm just not photogenic. Oh, no, no. You, no, deserve, no. you deserve a better headshot. And... 
they give the photographer all the credit in the world just because he has professional in front of his name. Uh-huh. And they just said, I, I just take bad photos. And that's not the case. You just didn't have the right photographer. So it's getting into this headshot world. It's very rewarding to see people as I take the pictures right now, I shoot tethered. And mm-hmm. so the uh, shots instantly pop up on the screen, the monitor. Mm-hmm. And there, a lot of people are just amazed. They're like, I can't believe that's me. I love it. And just it's rewarding to hear that yeah. and see the confidence build as we shoot because they realize they can take a great picture. They just never really seen themselves in good light yeah. or had a photographer that knows how to open them up a little bit. Yeah. Now, how long have you been doing this? Uh, say two years far as professional headshots. Mm-hmm. So uh, before that, it was just dabbling around and everything, anything and everything, mm-hmm. seeing what I was good about, what I liked, what I didn't like. So now I believe I saw that you had made a bit of an investment in yourself as far as getting, you know, an education, if you will, on mm-hmm. the art of snapping headshots. Uh, can yeah. you tell us a little bit about that? So I invested in the headshot crew. They mm-hmm. have a monthly subscription and basically you get to go in there. They have a big online forum. A lot of talented people are in there that's in the world of headshots. They answer business questions. They answer questions on how your setup is, what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong. Uh, they critique your photos for you, um, let you know there's a better when a professional looks at your image, she can tell you exactly what's going on, where mm-hmm. your light was, if your color is off, this and that, and how to fix it. Mm-hmm. And you just got to put that in action. So that's a really good group to be in. And they do Zoom calls all the time. Everybody's will chat with you, text with you, answer emails with you. You get business referred to you through the headshot crew. Nice. Nice. Um, Peter Hurley's an excellent instructor, top of the game headshots. Mm -hmm. Uh, So he's legendary when it comes to headshots. You can't go wrong (laughs) with him. So that's definitely a good investment. I also did a workshop with Gary Hughes. He's top of the line too when it comes to headshots. Um, and they have two different styles and both styles are phenomenal Mm -hmm. and they just answer all your questions. They, they help you out and they want you to succeed. And that's what's very rewarding about these groups. They want to see you do well. They know the recipe They and they share the recipe and pretty much just got to go do it. Yeah. I had Mr. Terrell Lloyd on several episodes back on the show. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Terrell Lloyd is a, he's the San Francisco 49ers team photographer. But before that he was a, an all around photographer. I mean, he did a lot of different things and he really honed his craft. And that led to him being a, a Canon explorer of light because not only was he honing his craft, he was educating people. And yeah. in that discussion, we talked about the fact that back in the days it was taboo for people to, to tell their secrets, if you will, when it came to photography. And he was like, screw that. I'm not, I'm going to share what I know. Um, and, and I love that there's more and more photographers out there willing to say, you know what, it's not a secret. Let's, let's spread this, this knowledge and help grow the community and help the community get even better at this craft yeah. with, with you being in those, having those two different resources there, what are your two biggest takeaways or what are your two, what, what two things do you enjoy the most that you've gotten out of that, those experiences? So first off, talking about people sharing their knowledge, Mm -hmm. I'm I'm a big fan of that. I think that's the way the world should work. I mean, I I like the competition in Charlotte. I don't look as people stealing business from me because there's a lot of people to go around for everybody. Everybody can do well with this. Yeah. And sharing secrets. I mean, just help your community out, you know, get, get people where they're going. I men are a lot of, mentor a lot of photographers through Instagram posts of how you did this. I see you do this well. I struggle at it. How do you fix that? What's the secret? And 
I take the time to chat with them because I was in that position where a lot of people wouldn't yeah. chat with me. They wouldn't tell me what I was doing wrong. Right. They just saw that. It was like, nobody's going to hire him. Good for me. Uh, <laughs> but as far wow. as takeaways, with the headshot crew, I really struggled with color mm -hmm. on my images as far as skin tones, uh, the background, stuff like that. And there were several several things that I was doing wrong that I wasn't aware of. One, I was shooting auto white balance, and I oh my, yeah. <laughs> oh I would I'd go back and forth. I would <laughs> just shoot with a gray card, and then I'd shoot auto white balance, and because I always know you could easily fix it in post. Yeah, but, with, with all of the the camera tech today, uh, the the. Even the JPEGs have a lot of data in it now, so you pull them in post. There's there's still a lot of flexibility. So, but at so the same that. time, that's extra time doing in post is if you can get it straight out of camera, uh, it's the best. So, experiment with that. Seeing I use a Godox eighty three hundred as my main key light. So, figuring mm -hmm. out the color temperature I like with that, and you set it straight with that, one hundred percent solved a lot of problems realizing that i need to cut off the overhead lights when i take photos headshot yeah. um that was a big deal and just the color temperatures are mixed and i'd have ugly skin tones and <laughs> i just uh figure it out in post you know that was kind of the motto if i mess up i'll figure it out in post and, and unfortunately now, that's like the worst thing to say you know <laughs> yeah so now my mind shit uh, mindset has shifted to where I'm gonna get it straight out of camera, yeah, and then do a little work in post, yeah. So that's helped a lot. Uh, shooting tethered is another big factor. It's easy to get color correct with the person standing right there in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that uh, that was a big deal, and just seeing color values of my a backdrop stuff like that to be a more consistent photographer so that's really helped um uh, also far as i usually shoot with just one light mm -hmm. but adding hair lights stuff like that edge lights i'm starting to get into um light in the backgrounds different to get different looks to get more looks quickly instead of shooting all on gray all on white mm -hmm. and on similar shots the only difference is you switched your tie now i can i'm getting where i can get several different looks in a matter of 45 minutes That's and awesome. so that given the client a wider variety of what they need that's awesome now I want to pause for a second here and, and, and thank one of our sponsors. You know, but when we get back, I want to talk about uh, your experience coming from the link, coming via the LinkedIn platform and, and getting the clients. And I'd like to take a look at your Instagram page, too. Is that cool with you? Oh, yeah. Perfect. All right. So let's take a few minutes to thank this week's fine sponsor, the folks at Melissa. This episode of Hands On Photography is brought to you by Melissa. Did you know poor data quality can cost organizations an average of $15 million a year? Good grief. If you're a small to medium sized business, we know you need every last cent. The longer poor quality data stays in your system, the more losses you can accumulate. To ensure your business is successful, your customer information needs to be accurate. Melissa is the lead and provider of global data quality and address management solutions. There's another side to this inaccurate data stuff, y'all. Customer service. If you address someone with the wrong name or verify the wrong address when dealing with an already frustrated customer, oh boy, things can get really, really bad. Heck, they'll go from bad to worse. So make sure you check out Melissa's cloud-based data cleansing and enrichment tool. It's so easy to use. All right, so you got five steps here. Step one. You upload your file, it's either you know a spreadsheet or a CSV format, into the first tab and you just copy and paste your data into the second tab. All right, step two, select the data quality service and then click next. Step three, map the input fields, okay? Step four, select the output fields and the data to a pin. Step five, process your list, boom, done. 
Melissa's data matching will help eliminate clutter and duplicates, reducing postage and mailing costs. You'll also get batch address cleaning, uh, process an entire address list for the accuracy and its completeness. You'll get name verification. That way you can parse and standardize the first and last names for personalizations. You get profiling. So this is where you're analyzed. It analyzes your data to improve its quality over time. And then you'll get email verification. Yeah, you'll be able to remove up to 95% of bad email addresses from your database because you know people always spell their email addresses correctly. That's sarcasm, folks. Melissa's flexible deployment options offer different platforms to suit any preference, business size, or budget. Melissa also has their new Lookups app. This is available on iOS and Android to search addresses, names, and more at your fingertips. Melissa continually undergoes independent security audits to reinforce his commitment to data, security, privacy, and compliance requirements. They're SOC 2, HIPAA, and GDPR compliant. That's what's up, Melissa. Melissa is experienced, independent, and has 37 years of data quality expertise, which explains why more than 10,000 businesses know them as the address experts. And if you sign up for a service level agreement, you'll get 24 seven world renowned support. Make sure your customer data is up to date. Get started today with 1000 records clean for free at melissa.com slash twit. That's melissa.com slash twit. And I appreciate Melissa supporting hands on photography. All right. So we're back in. Mike, uh, again, you've mentioned using LinkedIn as a as a vessel, if you will, to be able to funnel business. You know, can you share a little bit about that process? You know, I, I, I'm assuming you're not just like stalking people <laughs> or anything like that. But there's got to be a method to to your madness that's that's, you know, given some sort of a warm approach, if you will, that mm-hmm. that builds up the trust. What What is what is your thoughts in in how are you going about leveraging LinkedIn? Because I, I use LinkedIn myself too. It, it's a lot of businesses come from LinkedIn for me. So I, I'm, I'm all ears, but I just want to know what, what's, what's it like for you? Well, the thing with LinkedIn is I keep it simple. Um, one is just change your title to what you do. So people, every time you leave a comment, um, or like they see that I'm a Charlotte headshot photographer. So, Period. Easy as that. Look at that. Yeah, that, that <laughs> that's the biggest thing. Uh, so anything I do there, they always know this is his position and I need a headshot. Uh, next is there's a lot of people that's got terrible headshots on LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. I don't stalk them. I don't <laughs> message them. Don't do <laughs> nothing like that. But a lot of it is, you know, tapping in their community and mm-hmm. posting a few times a week letting them see your work, letting them see the behind the scenes, letting them kind of see the process. Um, and you realize that people's watching you in silence. A lot of times they're not liking your photos. Sometimes they're not commenting on them, but they do send the message. They do send the emails. Companies like to see what the consistency I've been doing for teams. So that's strong. Mm-hmm. And, a lot of people in the Charlotte area have started catching on that a headshot is can work for me. You know, it's a lot of people invest so much in their career, uh, school and stuff like that, but they right. don't invest in their personal image. And to me, that's you can have all the credentials like similar to a Mercedes, but you're driving around in a Kia, so you're not getting mercedes business you're not growing your business so if you market yourself that way spend time on your look you're looking your best having your best shot makes a big difference because then people's gonna start looking at your credentials when they usually just scrolled over you right right i love the analogy with the (laughs) the kia and the mercedes (laughs) yeah it's 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 so spot on though (laughs) a lot of people don't realize like i mean if you go to ruth chris and you buy their cowboy ribeye which is 60 bucks 
and you got that same steak that's so good, but if you throw it in Golden Corral, that's a fifteen dollar steak. Yeah. Just because of the way they market themselves. Just a whole different kind of brand. So whole different brand. Yeah. So I mean if you invest all this if you're trying to get the high end clients, it's not why not look your best. Right. Everybody right. you follow, all your mentors, they have professional pictures. It I mean, it matters how people see you. That's what's up. That's what's up. I, I love this analogy. Now I'm going to shift gears here. I'm going to see if I can switch my screen because I have to show your Instagram page and uh, take a look at some of these images here. Because again, when people have messaged me in the past <laughs> saying, hey, can you come do these headshots for me? And I'm like, uh, I'm about 2,500 miles away from you. So let me send you to my man, Mike. And I send them this this Instagram profile because it's absolutely beautiful. I appreciate it. I mean, it. all of these are, are there's headshots, there's the branding, uh, that, absolutely beautiful. And you've been doing this just for a couple of years, and you're getting these results out of this. You're clearly mm -hmm. taking the time to to hone your craft, you know. So I want to take a look at a couple of them. Let's take a look at this one up here at the top. All right this one here. All right, because you were talking about color. So I'm going to hit you with the hard questions here because I know being a black man, photographing black people or people of color can be mm -hmm. quite, a, quite a challenge when it comes to lighting and so forth, if you're trying yeah. to get their skin to look the way it's supposed to look. Uh, yeah. what, what is it like for you when you get people of color is your clients that walk in what what's what's going through your head at the time with the setup because i'm looking at this light in here and i can still see that this is one big key light looks like it's coming off to her right or i guess that's her left to the camera right and i believe you have some sort of bounce happening down here at the bottom of the frame mm -hmm. to fill in under the chin and and, yeah. and so forth but what is your what is your thought process T tell me a little more so before she walks in, my thought process is I set it up. I take a couple of test shots. Um, I have a certain way I like my key light, which is directly over her. I mm -hmm. position it, and then I, ha I use an eye lighter, a blower for mm -hmm. feel. Okay. So and this one also has a light on the background to make it white. To make it white. Okay. Good and stuff. And so the First off is I had to adjust the light after she come in because she's got beautiful hair, but it's it's hard to get light in to her eyes from uh -huh. their hair in front. So uh -huh. I brought it down a little bit, angled it a little bit forward at her, but it's feathered, so it's a softer light. This is a five-foot umbrella that was lighting her. Okay. Big, so, soft light. Big, soft light. Yeah, I, I like the umbrellas a lot. I use them a lot. And I like the collapsible big beauty dishes as well. Um, so I rotate between them. Um, this is my umbrellas is more of a travel setup just because it's easy to carry. Yeah. But uh, like you said, the big soft light, it's very flattering. And so now I'm when just, you, I'm, I'm going to cut you off for a second because you said a term here that. I, I know what it means, but maybe the rest of the hands-on photography community are not quite sure yet. You said feather the light. Or can you explain yeah. what feathering the light means? So I'm basically hitting her with the edge of the umbrella, the light that's coming off the edge of the umbrella. So I don't want to point the center of the umbrella directly at her because that light's just going to be a little too harsh for her Got and it. don't create a lot of hot spots. So the edge of the light, I kind of just bring it right where, say, it's coming right across her face, and the center of the umbrella is probably pointing at her waist. Okay. So, and then the height is, I typically do, she could reach out as arm's length and touch the umbrella. I like it very close to my close. subject. Mm-hmm. So that is feathered, then it hits the reflector and bounces and feels light under the chin, shows off her shoulders, everything like that. Mm -hmm. So, and then with the light on the background, I set it to where it's say 95% white. I don't want it to go fully white and I'll just 
add that in post, just set a curve layer and bring it up a little bit till it's white. Why don't you want it for a white in the shot? I I know why, um, but I'm curious the, to see if, if it's the same. It's on bounce back and flare. flare. There we go. Flare, <laughs> rapper, <laughs> And and sometimes it's still hard, but I mean, if you can get it where it's ninety five percent, ninety eight percent, or if you use Capture One, say around two forty five, two fifty, mm-hmm. you're in the right spot. Yeah. So good stuff, man. Good stuff. That, there's a couple that's another images. thing when you're shooting tethered, you get to see these values, so it's easy to do. Now this one here, this gentleman. I want to bring this up because he has glasses on and yeah. shooting glasses for or there's a headshot or just, you know, I don't care if it's a candid shot. Mm-hmm. Shooting glasses can be challenging. Yeah. Uh, what, what's your experience with shooting glasses? And is there anything that you, you sort of take in effect uh, pre shot, if you will? Uh, so everybody that has glasses has always had a bad experience with glasses and they want to take them off. Mm-hmm. First thing. Uh, and then I tell them, I ask them, do you wear glasses all the time? They say, yes. I was like, well, keep them on. So the first thing I do with this is I set the light the same way clamshell light. Mm-hmm. And it just accordingly to the person's face, I call a game of inches because it's just slightly changing. Mm-hmm. I like to see how it's hitting their face, where the light fall off is. Uh, and with glasses, I set it how I want it, take a couple test shots, look where the reflection's at, where it's coming from, and Mm -hmm. then I simply raise the light up. Mm -hmm. And that usually takes out the uh, the flare-up glasses, but a lot of times it don't. So there's (laughs) some trial and error. Uh, Eye lighter is more of an issue than my light a lot of times. Mm -hmm. Uh, But a lot of times also I shoot – with their chin down, I like bringing their chin down with headshots. So that also fixes the glare right. as well. Because it just slightly changes the angle, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. brilliant. That's the main thing is the angle of reflection with glasses. And sometimes it takes a couple of shots to fix. Sometimes it takes a whole five minutes to fix. But if you understand what the light's doing, you can easily fix it. Now, Mr. Victor, he will be able to zoom in on this a little more. But when he's talking about the eye lighter, folks, if you look in the model's eyes, you'll see this little bounce reflection right there. Um, Just giving yet another little bit of a catch light there. And that's what his key light, the big five foot umbrella is spilling into that reflector and it's bouncing up to fill in down here on her neck and, and, and just keep, cause normally that would just totally go dark and just be a, a, a soft shadow. It wouldn't be a hard shadow because he's got a very good soft box uh, umbrella, but it will still be really, really dark and it's not really flattering. Um, but yet at the same time, you do get these cool catch lights in here that just really, in my opinion, just gives more life to the model. And it just doesn't mm-hmm. look like a shot. It just looks like someone that's, that's human there. You know, yeah. but I love well, this. also the benefit to this. I tell people the secret to my style is in the eyes because I mean, it shows everything mm-hmm. and it's easy. Like I don't retouch eyes. I don't mm-hmm. brighten them up. I don't sharpen them. I don't add color because mm-hmm. if you get the light where it's supposed to be, it does it for you. Yeah. And that, you want the white in the eyes. You want to see the color in the eyes. Mm-hmm. So it's once you get that right, the rest is a piece of cake. Nice. Nice. Dude, this is this is such good stuff here. Folks, please make sure you follow him on Instagram, MJW Photo CLT. Um, if you're following me, you should be following him, Dad Gummins, as these are my people. Just beautiful work. The headshot man in Charlotte, North Carolina. I I feel quite strongly in saying that. Uh, Just beautiful work. Uh, Branding images. He's he's got it all. He's got it all. Dude, Mr. Mike, let me ask you one more thing. If you could give one tip to everybody that's that's just getting started in this, what would that one tip be? 
uh, far as if they're wanting to be a headshot photographer, it's just one tip. Uh, practice with the lights. Lights make all the difference. Uh, it don't matter what kind of softbox you're using, what kind of light you're using. Uh, practice and look and see what the light's doing. Pay attention to what the light is doing. And an easy way to do that is set your settings where you got a totally black frame and then just add the light. See where it's hit. We see where it's falling off. And if you need another one, you can add another one. If you need just a reflector or foam board, uh, you know, a dollar foam board from Walmart does the same thing as the highlighter. So <laughs> you don't have to get real expensive when you're testing this stuff out. But a lot of it is just, just take action and pay attention to what the light's doing. Absolutely. And, I love, I, I love the fact that you brought up the, dollar dollar fifty piece of foam core it was, mm -hmm. man i got those things all over the place yeah i've been there <laughs> done that. i mean i still have them in my studio yeah. where i mean it's a quick fix and it does the job it's for everything you, yeah. if, you, if you need just just some something under the eyes it's great if you're trying to feel on the, mm -hmm. the dark side well in this case for me it, i would put a feel here and that yeah. thing would just bounce some beautiful, just soft light right there to fill in the shadow yeah. on my face. And it cost you a buck, buck, buck 50, nothing yeah. at all. <laughs> I've used a sheet of paper for fill before. Sheet of paper. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it works. I mean, you know what it's doing. Concrete works as fill if you're outside. Yeah. So, I mean, just pay attention to the surroundings and it's all there. And photography don't have to be expensive at all. Right. Right. Man. Hey Mike, this has been great, brother. I, I'm I'm so glad I was finally able to, to to get you on here, and you know I kept sort of stalking you and whispering in your ear, "Hey, I want to get you on the show. I want to get you on the I show." <laughs> I'm glad I was That's finally able to get you on, my man. This That's has been a honor, lot man. of fun, a lot of fun. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to share or promote before we get out of here? Uh, no. I mean, as far as any questions, feel free to reach out to me personally through DM or email, however, and I can try to help you any way I can with headshots as uh, far as your audience. And yeah. Outstanding. Outstanding. Well, my man, again, thank you so much for your time. It was really good to see you. It was great seeing you. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. All right, folks, that is going to do it for this week's episode, man. This This is I love talking to other photographers and just, just, you know, just picking their brain and seeing what they're thinking. And yeah, there are a lot of times we're on the same wavelength and thinking things, but every now and then there's going to be a different approach. And I, I love that. And he's got some, he's got a certain way that he likes to do things. And Hey, from the looks of it there, it's clearly working. And the fact that the matter is he's giving you a nice, low barrier to entry, if you will, is this, it doesn't take a lot of money to be able to produce a lot of these, these shots that he produced. I mean, he's using umbrellas. Umbrellas are a lot cheaper light modifier than this big three foot, four foot parabolic soft box that I have right here in front of me and they work just as good. So take a look at the different resources out there. Utilize people like my man, Mike here and ask some questions and, and just get started on your photography journey, folks, and get started on that business that you, you've been aspiring to get started on. All right. Again, thanks for everybody hopping in and joining me each and every Thursday here on the network. Again, just make sure you continue to share the show with other folks. Be sure to tell a friend and tell at least one enemy so we can continue to grow the hands-on photography community. I want to give a shout out to my man, Mr. Victor, for making me look and sound good each and every week because, boy, I do not make this easy on him. I know I don't. And make sure you're giving me a follow on Instagram, too, if you're not doing that already. Follow me. I'm ant underscore Pruitt over on Instagram. Be sure to tag me in some of your favorite images on Instagram. And, and I want to see what you're shooting. I want to see how you're doing and just, just let me know. And I, I love getting these DMS from you folks that's showing me some of your shots. It's good stuff. Y'all are really good. And a lot of you have, have been watching the show for a while and it's been great seeing your progress. You're getting better and better at this craft. So let's keep going. Let's keep pushing each other and keep growing this photography community. All right. That's going to do it for me this week, folks. Thanks again. Be sure to safely create and dominate. And I will catch you next time.
Listeners of this program get an ad-free version if they're members of Club Twit. $7 a month gives you ad-free versions of all of our shows, plus membership in the Club Twit Discord, a great clubhouse for Twit listeners. And finally, the Twit Plus feed with shows like Stacy's Book Club, The Untitled Linux Show, The Giz Fizz, and more. Go to twit.tv slash club twit. And thanks for your support.